Hello guys, welcome back. In the last video we had discussed about arrays in details. And now we shall first take a look at some code for arrays and then we will start with pointers and lastly we shall see how pointers work using some code. So let's first get started with coding for arrays. So first of all as usual we will declare the header file. And then we will write the void main. Inside this let's make one <coughs> array variable. Let the size of the array be 5. And to iterate over the array we are using one integer variable that is say int i any counter. Now to initialize an array there are three methods. The first one that you can use is like this which is a pretty obvious method so error 0 is equal to say suppose 10 and inside this you have to write the index of the array so this will be 30 let's say 2 say this is 40 and this will be 50 now we are aware that for any array the indexing always starts with 0. So that's why over here I have written array 0 is equal to 10 and our array index goes up till 4 that is size minus 1. The size of our array was 5. You could have taken any size over here. You can take 50, you can take 5, you can take 500. But just for the sake of simplicity I have taken the size of the array to be 5. Now over here I have written array 0 is equal to 10 that means the first element of our array is 10 and likewise array 4 is equal to 50 that means the fifth element of our array is 50 so this is our first element second third fourth and this one is obviously the fifth element now in order to get the output we will run a loop inside this let's write so that must give as our required output. Let's build the code. Okay, so what we okay, let me just format it a little so that the code uh, or the output is visible. So you can see the first element is AR, uh, array, zero, array 0 is 10, array 1 is 20, array 2 is 30, 3 is 40, and 4 is 50. So that is the output that we obviously expect. Now this this process of initializing an array becomes way too tedious. Just imagine having a thousand elements in your array and you start to initialize your elements in this fashion. That is obviously not a desired method. So to overcome that we have another method using which you can initialize your array directly. So 10, 20, 30, say 40 and 50. Now in this method writing this 5 over here is optional you can either choose to write it or you may choose not to write it it makes no difference why so because over here you are uh, putting in some elements now in this case we have included five elements over here so the compiler will automatically detect that if you have placed n number of elements say if you have placed n number of elements over here that means your size of the array is n okay so the compiler will automatically detect that I'll just show you let us run this code you see the values that we are getting are the same now if you remove this 5 there will be no change in the output we will get it exactly in the same manner and we have got it so that is another method of initializing an array 
now yet another method is see over here when you do in this manner what happens is you're having to hard code the values but what if we want to take the values as input from the user in that case we obviously need to run a loop so let's directly copy this loop and paste it over okay uh, let's prompt the user to enter a value so enter array this this okay let's write a scanf percent is d comma array i so that will take the input from the user let's run the code say 10 20 30 40 50 so you see you're getting the output as 10 20 30 40 and 50 it works perfectly fine so that was about 1d array now let's move on to 2d array so we will directly copy this entire code because the process is more or less similar so for 2d array obviously you need to write it in this manner let's say 3 cross 3 over here we'll have this so this is the input for our first row this will be the input for our second row And then lastly the third row this is 70 80 90 so that is our 2d array we have initialized it but again this method is again very tedious as I already told you so we will not use that method I am showing it just for the sake of completion so in order to print it we will have to use two loops so let's copy this inner loop here I will have to write a j j and j let's print a new line here that probably is fine over here I will have obviously array ij let's run the code so it works as expected we've got the output 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 so that is a 2d array where the first element of the array is indicated by the indices 0 0 second one is 0 1 then is 0 2 now we move on to the second row so the first element of the second row is 1 0 then 1 1 then 1 2 and then the last row is 2 0 2 1 and 2 2 so again we will not use this method for initializing an array instead what we'll use is this method so let's say 60 70 80 90 okay now over here what you have to notice is this first uh, first value inside the square bracket is optional why is it so see the first value over here indicates the number of rows that you have in your matrix now if you do not include this one it doesn't make any difference 
because you're specifying the number of columns so obviously this number of column means number of columns per row so if you write a 3 over here the compiler will automatically understand that fine the f there will be 3 columns that means the first 3 values will go into the first row then the next 3 will go in the next row and so on and so forth so writing this 3 is completely optional so first of all let's compile the code with this 3 over here we'll get the same output so this is our output now let us remove this 3 and now let's build the code the output is again the same it makes no difference now what I want to say is that this is again hard coding but if the user has to enter the input we will again have to put in a loop over here so for that let us write a loop this will again be a two, uh, nested loop so let's write it like this and the loop will end here inside this we will prompt the user to enter the particular element and I will scan this so that is it so enter 0 0 let's say 10 20 30 40 60 and we will go till 90 so that is the output so that is all for the 2d arrays as well so the process is entirely the same whether it is 1d array or 2d array or n dimensional array the process is entirely the same you just need to keep in mind the dimension and the indices of that array okay now this is obviously static initialization of an array later on we'll also study about dynamic initialization that means over here the size of an array is already known to us but what if the size were not known what if the size would vary with time so in that case we obviously need dynamic initialization so that i'll teach you later on in further videos now let's move on to understanding pointers so what are pointers pointers are special variables that can hold the address of other variables because see if you have a variable say int a that int a stores some value maybe 5 now this variable if you are declaring it it is obviously stored at some location in memory so in order to get that location in order to get the address of that location we use pointers so pointers are declared using or other pointers are represented with an asterisk that is int star a it means that this a is a pointer variable which has a data type int okay let's take a look at this example over here we have one variable c one pointer variable star pc and c has been initialized with 5 and say the address of c is this which is obviously in hexadecimal form now when you write pc is equal to ampersand c it means store the address of c inside pc which is obviously one pointer so the value of c is 5 and the value of pc is this address this address now when you write star pc is equal to 5 it means we are referring to the location or rather we are referring to the value which is stored at this location so star pc means pointer to the location stored inside pc so that gives us 5 now if you write c is equal to 11 the value of c gets updated but the address remains unchanged and even if you write star pc equal to 11 it would work the same way okay now here we are writing star pc is equal to 2 so what this will do is it will just update the value of c from 11 to 2 because star pc means pointer to this particular address okay so that's why the value of c is getting updated let us take one more example over here we have two variables that is x comma y so x has the value 1 and y has the value 2 and we have declared one pointer that is int star ip so this ip is equal to ampersand x that means ip stores the address of x say suppose the address of x is 100 and that of y is 200 so obviously ip will contain 
100 now when you write y is equal to star ip star ip means value at this particular address that means value at address which is con contained inside ip so ip points to 100 and the value at 100 is 1 that's why y is getting updated with 1 and earlier it was 2 obviously now you are writing x is equal to ip so x had some value earlier that is 1 and ip also had some value that is 100 so when you write x is equal to ip it means assign the value of ip to x that is 100 now we are writing star ip is equal to 3 this means the value at address pointed by ip shall be assigned 3 that means ip was pointing to address 100 so we want to update the value at this address by 3 so that is what has been done over here now pointer supports several operations like increment decrement addition subtraction which are some basic arithmetic operations pointer supports relational comparison also we can also make arrays of pointers and it works in a manner exactly same as how arrays work next we have double pointers double pointers means pointer to pointer we shall see that when we code next pointers can be passed to function and yeah one important thing is that c does not support call by reference but it supports call by address in many places you will find people saying that call by reference and call by address is all the same but it is not so call by address is a different concept and call by reference is a different concept c supports call by address but not call by reference but c plus plus obviously supports both of them now let us see some code so first of all again stdio.h and then void main inside this i will declare two variables say int a is equal to 5 and b is equal to this was 7 and i will also declare three pointers star p1 star p2 or let's say star p a star p b and d p now what i'll do is a is equal to 5 b is equal to 7 okay let's write p a is equal to address of a p b is equal to address of b and dp is equal to say address of pa i'll explain you everything that i'm doing first of all let's just first do it ampersand a is equal to Let us also print the value of a. Similarly, we do the same thing for b. Now, what I'll do is star. Okay, uh, p a. And here I'll write. PB one more thing what it'll do is let's write this star PA Here I'll write star pb. Okay, let me see. A is there. M percent A B M percent P. Star P A. Fine. P A is equal to this. Okay, that looks good. Let's see. Let's put a new line everywhere. maybe a 
double new line over here. Okay, let us build the code. Now see, a is equal to five. Ampersand a is two three five eight eight four four. Okay, b is equal to seven, and ampersand b is equal to two three five. Eight eight four zero, fine. Now see, star p a is giving us the same value as a, and p a is giving us the same value as ampersand a. Similarly, star p b is giving us the same value as b, and p b is giving us the same value as that of ampersand b. So why that is so? I'll explain it to you. See over here. I had written a is equal to five, and b is equal to seven. Now ampersand a means address of a. Ampersand a is address of a. Similarly, ampersand b is the address of b. Let's write the same thing here. Ampersand b is address of b. So what I did is, I assigned address of A to this pointer. Now, what is according to what I uh, showed you in the slide, what is a pointer? Pointer is a special variable <coughs> that can hold the address of other variables. So this one, this P A is a pointer variable as we have already declared it, and this pointer variable is capable of holding the address of any other variable. so that is precisely what we are doing over here so obviously p a is holding the address of a so this address of a and the p a over here will give the same output that is pretty obvious now coming to this star p a what star p a means <coughs> is star p a Is equal to value at address of a. So that is the reason why star p a gave us five and star p b gave us seven. Because p a is nothing but address of a. Star indicates value at. So the value at address of a is nothing but value at p a. so this p a is holding some address where this a resides so the value at the address of a is nothing but 5 and that is why we got that output now the last thing that i intend to do is we have written dp is equal to n ampersand p a to see this dp as you can see is a double pointer p a by itself is a <coughs> P A by itself is a pointer, so I have written a double pointer over here. That means pointer to a point. By writing this, what I intend to do is I want to store the variable of this. Uh, I want to store the address of this pointer variable into another pointer variable, which is a double pointer. So what this will do is <coughs> it will store the address of P A. See, let us write. P A actually address of P A and over here let us write D P it will give us the same value. One more thing, let us print. dp this will give us the address of a and lastly star star dp will give us the value of a let us see okay star dp is equal to 2358844 okay let us first come to this address of pa is 
235.8832 and dp is equal to 235.8832 so both these are containing the same value that is quite obvious because I have stored address of A inside dp so that was pretty obvious to occur now interesting part is this one star dp is equal to 235.8844 this thing is nothing but the value that is stored inside pa now what is the value stored inside pa it is nothing but the address of a so star dp is essentially the address of a and star star dp is nothing but the value of a now why we get such an output as <coughs> see what is happening is dp is equal to address of pa fine now star dp is equivalent to star address of pa that means value at this value of address at pa or rather value of ampersand pa now what is ampersand pa ampersand pa is the address of pa now what is the value stored at the address of PA? It is nothing but address of A. See, PA holds ampersand A. That means PA has some address in memory. Inside that address, the address of A is stored. So that's why star DP was giving the address of A. So that is what we have done over here. Now again, when I write star star dp it is equivalent to star star this so this this thing is nothing but the address of a that means star star dp commented is equal to star address of a now what is stored inside address of a it is nothing but the value 5 so that is why we got star star dp as 5 now we come to increment and decrement increment and decrement operation on pointers so okay let's do it here itself let us perform that on uh, maybe yeah fine we have the initial value of uh, say uh, pa okay we have the initial value of pa let's write printf pa is equal to let's put two new lines comma percentage d pa now let's perform pa plus plus and now again print the same thing and now I'll do PA minus minus and again print the same thing so see initially the value of PA was 2358844 after performing PA plus plus after performing P plus plus, the value of PA became 2358848. That means it got incremented by 4. That is pretty obvious because it is an integer. See, PA is holding the address of an integer variable. And PA itself is also an integer. And as per the earlier videos, we already know that size of an integer variable is 4. So that is why upon performing pa plus plus it is changing from 44 to 48 and again when i perform this decrement operation that is pa minus minus the value is changing from 48 to 44 again so that is increment and decrement operation okay now if pa equal to pb so printf equal 
uh, we don't even need this else printf unequal it is pretty obvious that the value will be unequal but this one i'm showing it to you just for the sake of completion because obviously the value uh, the address inside pa and address of pb cannot be the same because p is holding the address of variable a and pb is holding the address of variable b so it can never be same so let's run the code and we'll get the output as unequal that was pretty obvious now what is remaining is yeah swapping so for that i will make another file say uh, let us save the file save as uh, what to say maybe swap it's obviously a c file now over here i will illustrate to you something that is called call by address so void main over here i will make two variables again say a is equal to 10 and b is equal to 30 and i intend to swap these two values so what i will do is first i will okay yeah, print before swapping so print f a is equal to something uh, maybe okay a and Say b is equal to this now i will make a call to this swap function inside which i will pass the address of a and address of b and then i will write after swapping let's put in some new lines over here So obviously I need to define this swap function so for that as because I'm passing the address of two variables I need to have a pointer over here so let us say star a and in star b inside this let's make a temporary variable so what I'll write is say temp is equal to star a star a is equal to star b and star b is equal to temp so let us see whether the value has been swapped so before swapping the value of a was 10 and after swapping the value okay yeah so before swapping the value of a was 10 and value of b was 30 and after swapping the value of a is 30 the value of b is 10 so obviously the value is getting swapped now over here the reason why i'm passing this address of a and address of b is that there's a slight difference between what we had earlier seen call by value and this is call by address now why is it call by address because we are passing the value of uh, or rather we are pass passing the address of our variables which we want to swap okay and as because we are passing the address of the variables we need to have some pointers in order to accept the address okay so now over here we are performing operation on some pointers that is some swap this is entirely our swap logic and once this is done the change is actually reflected into the original variables instead uh, uh, like unlike the earlier one where the change was not reflected in the original variables that we had in this case the change is reflected directly into this original variables so that is why this method is known as call by address now the last thing in pointers remains is that how to use pointer as an array so let us make an array of this size 2 and let's say p1 is equal to say address of a and p2 
is equal to say address of b it is very much like arrays now what i do is okay just comment out this thing and also this one what i intend to do is for i is equal to 0 i less than 3 i plus plus print if percentage d what do we have address of a say okay p let's say i maybe okay fine let's write this i comma what i'll write over here is p i now there are two notations how you can write this one is this normal array notation and another notation is plus i let us declare the variable and run it okay what's wrong um, okay i did not place any new line over here let's place a new line P0 is 4225576. Again, P0 is 4225576. So essentially, both these methods serve the same purpose. Now, P1, okay, what's wrong? 0, 1. Okay, obviously, this will be 2. That's the reason why it was giving us a garbage value because the size that we have defined of this uh, pointer is obviously size 2 that means 0 and 1 so the third one was giving a garbage value so p0 is 4225576 again p0 is 4225576 and the second one again 2358856 2358856 so basically this notation and this notation both are the same they do not have any difference now if you write let's see if it works I'm not pretty sure. What I'll do is Yeah. Okay, what's wrong? P1 is giving 10. It's fine. P0. Okay, let's do this. giving us 10 over here and 0 over here I don't know. oh yes obviously this will be a 0 this will be a 1 well, let's see if it works now yes it's probably working yeah so star pi is 10 and 10 and star of star p plus i is 30 and 30 so over here what i mean is when you write p i you are actually accessing this pointer array you are not accessing this values when you write p i it means the value that is stored at say if the value of i is 0 it means p 0 it is completely like a normal array so what is stored inside p 0 inside p0 the value of uh, or rather the address of a is stored so that is why when we write pi like this we were getting the address of a and when we wrote star pi we got the value that was stored inside that address that means the value it was something like 
<coughs> this so this basically meant the value that is stored inside this address okay so that was the reason why we were getting the output like that and over here also this is another notation i would suggest you to follow this notation because this one sometimes gets you confused this is a little tricky notation but uh, if you feel comfortable with this one you can just use this notation otherwise you can normally use this notation i feel this one is much simpler so that is all for this video i will suggest you to practice pointers very very thoroughly because this is a very important chapter and uh, even even for your interviews you will get many questions for from pointers so this is a very important chapter and uh, many output based questions also come in the exam from this chapter so do practice pointers thoroughly that's all for this video thank you